Bucyrus Erie's story is a tale of survival, determination, and reinvention. It began as a small, scrappy manufacturing business in rural Ohio, but its founders, driven by ambition, would face challenges so fierce that they had no choice but to uproot the entire company to Wisconsin in a desperate bid to stay alive. They had to leave Ohio completely to survive. But what if I told you this global giant, Boxrus Erie, began with nothing more than a man with a dream, struggling to make ends meet in the industrial chaos of 19th century America? Bankruptcy threats, internal disagreements, and fierce competition nearly crushed Bucyrus before it could even get started. Bucyrus Erie almost didn't happen. It's a story full of ambition, financial struggle, and huge gambles, some of which paid off in monumental ways, and others that nearly sank the company. But from these risky moves emerged one of the most important players in the world of construction and mining equipment. They built machines that transformed landscapes, dug the Panama Canal, constructed America's largest dams, aided NASA's space exploration dreams, and, later, caught the eye of construction giant Caterpillar. The beginnings of Bucerus Erie. The story of Bucerus Erie begins in the heart of 19th century Ohio, with Daniel P. Eels and two other associates. Their backgrounds couldn't have been more diverse, yet they shared a common vision of mechanized construction that would change the world. Daniel P. Eels, the main visionary behind Bucyrus, was born in 1825 to a modest family in Ohio. Eels grew up with a practical mindset and a passion for innovation, but financial instability often plagued his early adult life. His first ventures were in banking, where he learned valuable lessons about capital and investment. But his true interest lay in mechanization, especially in the growing American infrastructure. To achieve this ambitious dream, Eels enlisted the help of two friends, one an engineer who knew the technical aspects of machinery, and the other a man experienced in operating steam shovels. These three men came together in Bucyrus, Ohio, a small town with limited opportunities but big industrial ambitions. Their goal? To manufacture steam shovels, machines that would replace the backbreaking manual labor of digging with mechanized precision. However, their journey to success wasn't smooth. Bucyrus Foundry and Manufacturing Company was founded in 1880, but their first steam shovels were expensive to produce and difficult to sell. The market wasn't ready to embrace this new innovation. Clients were hesitant to trust machines over human labor, and early sales were sluggish at best. The company's financial strain hit hard, and by the time they had invested heavily, they were teetering on the brink of bankruptcy. Internal tensions only compounded the difficulties. The co-founding engineer wanted to push forward with more advanced designs, while Eels, more pragmatic, sought to cut costs and focus on survival. The third co-founder, watching his investments dwindle, became increasingly concerned about the company's future. The disagreements were so intense that, at one point, the founders nearly parted ways. Had that happened, Bucyrus would never have evolved into the global powerhouse it would eventually become. By 1893, the pressure to keep the company alive reached a boiling point. The Panic of 1893, a financial crisis that rocked the American economy, worsened the situation. Ohio's industrial landscape was tough, and the economic downturn made it clear that a drastic change was needed for survival. The move to Wisconsin and reinvention. In the face of these challenges, the founders made one of the most pivotal decisions in Bucyrus's history, moving their operations from Ohio to South Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Why Wisconsin? The state was more industrially stable, with easier access to transportation and raw materials. Additionally, it offered cheaper labor and land, which was critical for a company on the verge of bankruptcy. This bold move gave Bucyrus a fresh start. Starting over wasn't easy. Establishing a new base in South Milwaukee meant finding new workers, establishing new supply chains, and breaking into new markets. But the gamble paid off. The new location allowed Bucyrus to lower production costs, increase its workforce, and refocus on building machinery. The company's steam shovels began to gain traction, and it wasn't long before Bucyrus became known as a reliable manufacturer of heavy-duty machinery. During this period, Bucyrus introduced one of its most famous inventions, the steam shovel. Steam shovels were critical for large-scale excavation projects, 
such as railway construction and open pit mining. Busiris's steam shovels were revolutionary for their time, allowing companies to move mountains in record time. Busiris's reputation soared when it became a key supplier of machinery for the construction of the Panama Canal. In 1904, Busiris supplied 77 steam shovels for the project, machines weighing 95 tons and capable of moving up to 8 tons of material at once. These steam shovels were vital for digging the vast canal that would link the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. The use of Bucyrus machines on the Panama Canal project helped shorten the construction timeline, cementing the company's place in industrial history, expansion, innovation, and global recognition. The success of the Panama Canal project marked a turning point for Bucyrus. The company's future was no longer in jeopardy, and it began to expand its reach both in the United States and internationally. In 1927, Bucyrus merged with the Erie Steam Shovel Company, another Ohio-based manufacturer of steam shovels. This merger significantly strengthened Bucyrus, giving it access to new technologies and expanding its production capabilities. From this point on, the company was known as Bucyrus Erie. Despite some initial cultural differences between the two companies, the merger proved successful. Bucyrus Erie became synonymous with reliability and innovation in heavy machinery. As the company grew, so did its machines. One of the most famous machines to emerge from this period was the Bucyrus Erie 1850B, a massive dragline excavator nicknamed Big Brutus. Standing 160 feet tall and weighing 11 million pounds, Big Brutus was the second largest electric shovel in the world. Big Brutus became an icon of American industrial might, used primarily in coal mining operations. Other notable machines included the Bucyrus Erie 1570W walking drag line and the 120B shovels that played key roles in the construction of major infrastructure projects, including the Hoover Dam. Bucyrus Erie's machines helped build landmarks such as the Golden Gate Bridge and the New York City subway system. Bucyrus Erie's versatility extended far beyond its roots in construction and mining, particularly during World War II. The company quickly adapted its machinery for military applications, producing mobile cranes and shovels that were crucial in rapidly constructing airfields, bridges, and other infrastructure in combat zones. These machines were indispensable in the logistics and engineering operations that supported the Allied forces. One of the most notable contributions was during the D-Day invasion in 1944, when Bucyrus Erie cranes played a key role in constructing temporary harbors along the Normandy coast. These harbors, known as Mulberry Harbors, were essential in allowing the Allies to unload troops, vehicles, and supplies much more efficiently, which was vital for the success of the invasion. After the war, Bucyrus Erie's machines continued to serve a critical role in large-scale infrastructure projects around the world. One of the most significant post-war projects was the construction of the Aswan High Dam in Egypt, a monumental engineering feat that required the use of some of the most advanced heavy machinery available at the time. Bucyrus Erie's equipment was central to the project, helping to move vast amounts of earth and rock to create the dam that would provide flood control, irrigation, and hydroelectric power to the region. Through its contributions to both military efforts during the war and major infrastructure projects in the decades that followed, Bucyrus Erie solidified its reputation as a leading manufacturer of heavy machinery. The company's ability to innovate and adapt to the needs of the time ensured its place in the history of global engineering. The End of Bucyrus Erie and Its Legacy Despite its success, Bucyrus Erie faced numerous challenges. By the 1980s, the company was struggling to compete with foreign manufacturers, particularly from Japan and Germany. As the American economy shifted away from manufacturing and mining, demand for Bucyrus's core products declined. In 1988, the company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, marking the beginning of the end for Bucyrus as an independent entity. In 1997, after struggling to maintain its foothold in the rapidly changing market, Bucyrus was restructured and rebranded as Bucyrus International, shifting its focus primarily to mining equipment. This change marked a new chapter for the company, with an emphasis on producing heavy-duty machinery tailored for the evolving needs of the global mining industry. 
Under the leadership of CEO Tim Sullivan, Buxerus International managed to experience a brief period of resurgence in the early 2000s, largely driven by the surge in global commodity prices. As demand for mining equipment skyrocketed, Bucyrus's innovative designs, such as its massive drag lines and excavators, positioned the company as a key player in the mining industry once again. Despite this resurgence, Bucyrus could not entirely escape the pressures of globalization. The company faced intense competition from both domestic and foreign manufacturers, especially as manufacturing costs in the United States remained high. By 2011, facing challenges in maintaining its competitive edge, Bucyrus agreed to be acquired by Caterpillar Inc., the world's largest manufacturer of construction and mining equipment. The acquisition, valued at a staggering $7.6 billion, marked the end of Bucyrus as an independent entity, but ensured its legacy continued within the larger framework of Caterpillar. Although Bucyrus no longer operates as a standalone company, its impact on the construction, mining, and industrial sectors remains undeniable. From its pioneering steam shovels used in the Panama Canal to its massive excavators that helped build landmarks like the Hoover Dam, Bucyrus machines revolutionized large-scale construction projects and infrastructure. Bucyrus's commitment to innovation pushed the boundaries of machine capabilities, with its machinery growing larger, more powerful, and more efficient, leaving an enduring legacy within the industrial world. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this.